G'day, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be looking at how to desaturate an item in your video using a different tool than what we would normally use in the past. So just a quick thing about this image. Obviously this is old footage. This is something I graded a long time ago just for practice. There's nothing on the um, node graph. That's because it's an actual LUT. So nothing too exciting. It's just, you know, a bit of contrast and saturation, a little bit of balancing, maybe it's pushed a little bit warmer than normally it would look, but that's about it. Alrighty, so let's get straight into it. So let's say we want to desaturate this cup. Well, normally we would use the qualifier and we'd come across and we'd make a selection and then we'd press Shift H, which would give our selection. And then we'd say, oh no, we have all these bushes here. So what would we do? We'd put a qualifier window around that cup. And then we'd have to re define our selection or refine our selection sorry because we have a little bit of black area here so we'd come across for a qualifier bring some of those black areas up and now we're losing some of that detail just kind of just pull around with it until we get something that we're happy with so obviously this takes a lot of time and um something like that's not too bad you can just blur it out a lot. And then we have a selection. It's not amazing. Because we still have a lot of stuff here. So if we really wanted to get into it, then we'd obviously change a lot of this. But then maybe we'd come back and we'd use a pen tool. And we'd be like really precise about our selection. But then of course we'd have to track it. And something like this is never going to track. The venture roll is not the best for tracking, I have to admit. So we'd have to use frame and go frame by frame. Well, not frame by frame, but, you know. You'd have to track that object, make new points, etc., etc. But let's say we don't want to do that. Let's say we're on a timeline, or we just can't be bothered doing it in general. What would we do? I'd find the point that is the closest to this bush here, because this is a very similar color. And I would just build a massive where around our man here, man and cup, the old cup and man, and I would come to the color whopper. Let's make this a little bit bigger. So with the color whopper, it starts off with very few points. The more points you have, the more precise you can be. So I always crank it up to about 12. I think that's a pretty good selection. Now the way it works is if you go out, you are adding saturation in. And if you go towards the middle, you are desaturating that. So let's just reset that by clicking this little button here. So how do we see what our selection is? Quite easy. So if your little uh, qualifier isn't showing up, come down this arrow here and then go to qualifier. Now make your point. You can click it, but it, it clicks off straight away. So it basically just tells you where that area is. You can actually hold it and move it around like that way. Uh, we're not going to do that way. So I'm just going to find out the general kind of area. So I would say around here seems to be our color. So we can actually do a little box like this. And then we can just bring it in. And that's desaturating it, as you can see. And we might need to add maybe this one here in just a little bit. And then just one, and then... Okay, so let's look at our selection. So let's get rid of this stupid spider's web. And full screen, control F. This is with it off. And then this is with it on. The spider web on. And as you can see, look how quickly we've done that. Now, that is such a quick and efficient way to desaturate something. We don't have to track the item because it's not passing any green object in the frame. So that's something that's really important. The less tracking you do in DaVinci Resolve, the better, because tracking can be very time consuming. And a lot of times when you're doing a project, you have a very limited amount to do. And a lot of times when I'm doing it, I'm sitting next to a director and cinematographer, and <laughs> there's nothing worse than when you have to power, power window an item and then spend ages tracking it and refining it. And, you know, it's just not the most fun 
you can have in a day, but that's fine. Let's say I want to change this one. So let's go out of it again. Let's control F. And let's just reset this node. So just right click, reset node grade. Let's say I want to desaturate this item up here. So again, let's make this big. And let's add some more points. If I want to desaturate this one again, I would just find the general area. Uh, I'd say maybe around, what do you reckon? Here is, so maybe like these ones up here, I would say. And if I was to bring them down. Okay, so that's nice and desaturated. But if you look, it is actually taking out a lot of saturation from our face and our background because this grade is quite warm. So now we are desaturating everything else. Obviously, we don't want that. So let's turn it back on. And then what we have to do is make a power window. And we use our friend, the pen tool, which is the best tool in DaVinci Resolve. Let's get rid of this cup because it's annoying. Oh my God, take a hint, mate. Get out of the way. And then bring this around. And we're just going to do a rough selection for now. Doesn't have to be perfect. And something like this. Again, this is not normally how I would do it. I'd be more precise, but that's okay. Make our selection a bit softer. So just bring it in a little bit. And then just bring it out a bit. And then again, bring it in just a little bit more. And then if we look at our spider's web now, we've already desaturated, so it should be pretty fine. I'll do it even more. Let's go extreme. That looks pretty good. And control F, full screen. And then this is with the spider web off and spider web on. And now as you can see, we don't have anything else in the area that's being desaturated. And everything is great. And it looks amazing. Now, if you wanted to change the hue. The hue doesn't work as well as I would like it to work with the color whopper. I think it works really well with saturation. The hue is a bit, I don't know, it's not super great. This isn't the, this is quite an, it's not a super new tool, but it is new. So maybe Resolve will get better in the future, but you'd make your selection. And if you want it to be, let's say purple, you'd push it to purple. And then if you want it to be, let's say green, obviously you put it to green. Now, as you can see, like this kind of stuff, it's a little bit wonky, but I mean, changing hue and object in general, you don't want to push it too far because it's very noticeable. Like with pink, that does not great because obviously it's too saturated. So we could even bring out some of that saturation, but that looks more natural than let's say green. So some colors work better than other colors. Yeah. Just have a play around with it. It is a very great tool. I'm not sure if you know about it, but if you, I'm sure you probably know it's been around for a while. <laughs> um, but I haven't made a video for a long time. So I thought it'd be something interesting that we could all have a look at. So leave your comments below. Tell me what you think of the tool and how you would normally desaturate an object. Would you normally track it using the qualifier? Or would you use the old color whopper? Or would you use the old hue versus hue saturation in the curves, which is this one here? Anyway, leave a comment below, negative or positive. I always want to hear your thoughts and Thanks again for watching. I have COVID at the moment, so I have a little bit of time because I'm isolating. I hope you have a great New Year's. I hope everything is going well. Thanks again for watching. I've been Drew from Gingo Productions and have a great day.